here. Oi Chan in blue for OPGG Skeleton and Korea and Oz in red for Fav Gaming and Japan. Korea as a whole country region are currently down considerably 5-0. But we see Mini Pekka coming in here. Mini Pekka with the spear goblins behind, the goblin hub behind. There's a bandit that's going to connect onto the tower. And yeah, Nintendo was only holding on the baby dragon. We'll pick it out, but get the dash damage and a couple of hits onto the tower. Already banded. Powerful tool. You actually use it as a defensive tool. Also, actually, maybe he was also in short of his own hand, using minor to defend against the baby dragon. As I said, I think we've seen quite a lot of these uh, miners being used for defense from the Japanese region. I remember last week was very similar where they would always throw down this miner defensively to make sure that the push doesn't touch their towers. Lava Hound, Minion Horde there. Does he have an answer to that Minion Horde? There's the Fireball, but another Bandit coming in here. Goes at the tower. He's gonna get a lot of hits off. One, two, three, four. Five. Early a lot, but about the same, or maybe better with the pop oh, and the so miner. So tons of damage, and that's going to be the first crown going for Richan. He's also wanting to kind of trade that with the bandit, but bandit will get taken out by the princess tower after getting about 900 damage. Yeah, it's not very often you see absolutely every single pop from a lava hound focused down on the tower. Usually they get a bit distracted, but that time, no distractions, and it just melted that tower. In effect, of course, if it connects to the tower, it will do a lot of damage. It seems like it Gets does get hit. does get one hit. Now it's 566, but still a tower down. And a very scary push coming in here with the Lava Hound and Mega Minion, plus the Baby Dragon. Baby Dragon is going to deal with that Minion Horde rather easily, actually. With the and this is a very powerful push. Out. There's another Lava Hound. Oh my goodness, what is Oz going to do here? The miner, the worst of a problem. Even the spears goes down, down, going in. Even the baby dragon is still there, so that's a lot of units actually take care of it. So we going down again, getting two crowns already in this one v one. Oz, he cannot come back into this game. Twenty seconds may just be as well. Three crowns. Inferno dragon locks on, and that's going to be over eight hundred damage a second. There we go. So much damage. Three crowns has happened finally tonight. Liu Chan. What a sky deck, basically. I don't know what else you could call that, but... Well, let's see if he actually brings that Infernal Dragon once again, Ui chan Do I have a feeling that he may just stay with the similar one? Of course, if... Of course, I said he'd change. So, <laughs> of course, he's going to keep the same deck. But both these players are just warming their hands up. They're going to be waiting until that double elixir time, which means... We haven't seen anyone try to cycle anything, so I guess they got the perfect hands each. Both players have the perfect hands. There's a log, so there is a bit of a cycle here. Dropping that down, testing the water, how the temperature feels. Right there with the log. Oh, not really going to respond, maybe he has brought, brought his own lava out his favorite. Oh, so now we've started too late, too late. But that was all it took for these players to decide to start actually playing and not wait for this Elixir Mark. So Lumberjack is down, Mega Minion for Oichan. There's the Spear Goblin. There's the Goblin Hut. We'll be connecting as soon. Oh, a Night Witch. Golem coming after this, maybe? That's very possible. So we can drop the Zappies. Even before, just predicting what is going likely going to happen. We haven't seen any kind of support for this Night Witch. There's a defensive miner coming out from Oichan. Making sure that Night Witch doesn't attack the Sparkies. Zappies. Zappies. Having the slow stun onto the baby dragons will help a little bit. Gets connected with the damage onto the right tower. Only a little bit of damage. Zappies continue their push forward, but do get taken out by the Lumberjack. That Rage Potion is going to drop down on absolutely nothing here. 
Mega Minion goes down, but there is always a Spear Goblin from behind it. We see a Pekka from Oichan against the, go the Golem of Oz. The Golem has been ready, but now with the Knight, with the Knight which right after. The Zappies are going to be a good answer for the bats that are going to be coming out of this Night Witch. But so is a Poison. And they lock on. There is a Rocket dealing so much damage. But Pekka stands. Pekka still takes down those Golems. Pekka's the only one Zappies will go down. Along with the damage onto the Pekka from the Rocket as well. So it has to drop the Rogos along with the damage. But against the air unit, will just go straight to the tower. Has to drop in the Night Witch. This time the offensive runner. Oh, and he does activate that King Tower. It's late in the game, but that's still a decent amount of defense there for Oz with the towers only. Yeah, Rocket after looking after seeing that Rocket, which will be changing his placement on the Goblin Hunt every single time now. It's a little bit tougher with his overtime. Not too much damage to any of the tower, only the lowest one actually 1700. Yeah, it's been uh, very back and forth, a lot of Fighting, getting stuck like just in front of the towers and not connecting with them. Zappy's connecting with the baby dragon, so the lumberjack is just going to finish them up. Ooh, one left. Decent amount of damage from the Zappy that was on the left hand side, though. Go left, right. Not right next to, not right on top of the bridge. Actually on the side. Laying that little bit, three poison to deal damage. Even the ball. Pushing that a little bit back. That which is, has been the unfelt with already. The ball might. So went down even, not really damaging the hut even too much. No, the columns went down very, very easily. Pekka is a very, very good counter. But that tornado there, dragging the Pekka into the night, which I don't think he really wanted to do that. So the ghost actually connected with the tower once, so he was actually a little bit late. The damage once onto the tower, down to 9-10. May just be enough with the time we have. 1.48 on the clock. One hit from the miner, two hits from that miner. Every little helps at this point. Oichan does have an advantage. A very usable advantage as well. Lumberjack really not too much of a help. I think he, I think Oz, Oz really has to use that Lumberjack to power up the rage onto the Golem. Oh, the Royal Giant just connected with the tower. There's a tornado just in time. He did get one hit though. And he's, he's losing in the Elixir raid because of that. If he does have the rocket, the miner is also the problem. The left one is so low, we'll be going down to a poison and well to finish up will be very soon. Golem is taken care of onto the right side. Yep. That should be it. I think Oichan has this in the back, but he does have one minute left to drop that poison on the tower. Plus a little bit of extra damage, I believe. There's the miner, there's the poison. He does get the one hit from the miner, two hits from the miner, and that is gonna be enough. Oichan taking game two. OPGG Skeleton won. One set there. Oichan convincing fashion, would you say? We have Chasu and Jin TV for OPGG Skeleton in blue. And we have Rad and Yakitori, the golden pair for Fav Gaming, in red at the top. So we'll be the golden push once again. It will be big drop down drop by Fav Gaming. Lava Hound has been the key card for their 2v2. Let's see how they, how each team approaches their big, heavy ones to push it. Lumberjack does walk behind the golem, pushing it just a little bit. There's a wonderful Inferno Dragon connecting on that Larva Hound long before he got anywhere near the tower. So the golem will get a couple of hits in here with the Rage Potion as well. Not too much damage though. Yep, once it goes, Breaks off to the gold mites. Doesn't really do too much. There's a balloon now. Ooh. Diving right in with a rage potion right on top. Rocket has to be used. Still going to get the, the death bomb damage onto that tower. They really need to build some kind of heavy support behind this golem that will actually push forward and not get stuck in that defensive circle there in the, across the bridge. The reason why Golden was able to go all the way, even after the Coopston, was because they actually. Ended up using double the zap. He had to refresh the laser twice from Inferno the Dragon. Not going to be refreshing this time as another raid dropped off by Fab Gaming. This time does a lot more damage from the Golem and the Golemites. Down to 1,582. And is there enough here for this air defense? There's the Ice Golem. What are they going to have to actually support that? Nothing else. Might get a little bit of a connection there. Yeah, that's it. 
still a decent amount of damage. 1862. Brings I, don't, the I, don't, I don't think you really want to waste too much as you are also lacking maybe lacking spells right after. And you want to be hard actually connected. Yeah, and you want to be saving the elixir for that golem that's going to be coming down. The bats will get taken out quite easily by the tower and the skeletons too. Double Lava Hound, double Inferno Dragon. Oof, that's, that's a heavy push. Out, but the Rage on top and the Balloon is coming. The Rockers were already used, so has to drop down the Infer Electro Wizard. Will, be, will basically be a trade, maybe a race for the third crown. Going straight to the King Tower. It has to be a race, but at this point it looks like Fab Gaming might actually have a little bit of an advantage in this push. There is so many units down there now. What is connecting to the tower? Just the Lava Hound for right now. The other Lava Hound they just dropped starts going for the Princess Tower, but the Inferno Dragon does connect. Ooh. Give it the rage. Comes down from, from OBGD continuing their push and stopping that giant push from Lava Hound after Lava Hound. That was very dangerous. It had the that push, if connected to the tower, had the chance just to delete that HP bar with nothing else. Lava Hound and Inferno Dragon again coming up with the guards behind. What do OPGG Skeleton have here to be able to defend this? They do have the rocket in place. And they're waiting for the perfect moment. We drop that, I think. It's about time we see the balloon as well. Not the lava instead oh, for now. It can, everything's connecting at the top right hand side. It's Lumberjack does a ton of damage to the tower connecting and the rage pops up later, but with the fireball, they actually push all the way in. Ice Golem taking some out of the damage, so we'll be defending pretty well against it, but still a good trade for Fab Gaming. Yeah, it looked like Yakutori celebrated a little bit too soon. It did look like that would be enough, and he kind of took his hands off the device for just a second. But here comes another big, powerful Throw push. Dragons right onto right onto the lava but this balloon. Base security, they do have the rage available. There we go. Nothing else to stop it, and that's going to be the end. Tombstone was not available, and they don't have anything else to stop that from happening. Maybe a rocket, but way too close they to the tower. Changed any of their spells or the units going into game number two. First game went to Fab Gaming. Yeah, Red and Yakutori have proved over and over again that they are a 2v2 team to be reckoned with. If they win this, they will be 5 and 1 in 2v2. That record is incredibly good at this point in time. We do see that Chasu and Jin TV in the blue are going Golem, Dark Prince. There is an Inferno Dragon, and Fab Gaming look like they're going for their own. Trust on everything. Make sure this connects to the tower. Not going to be yet. Golem doing some damage down to 1500 already. They've put down everything. They have to make this push worth a while. That Lumberjack, raged up Lumberjack, does so much damage, took out those Golemites in next to no time whatsoever. There's so much there again. This push is actually gigantic. Infernal Dragon kills the tower. Kills the tower, destroys directly. May just continue all the way to three, three crowns. And they defend it in time. Ooh, 529, a rocket. Poisons, oh my goodness. GG. There's nothing that they can actually stop from happening. Fab Gaming, they have already won this game with the space stuff. Few more spells, that's going to be just game over. OPGG spent way too much elixir in that big push forward without really getting anything accomplished. And they just had nothing left on the defense. The Golem is pushing. Any sort of damage, they, oh, they should have all the Look at that, even though OPGG is just dropping that rage on top of their own towers, they know. The game is already over, there's that first crown for OPGG, but all the way to the King Tower, Fab Gaming will take game number two and bounce back in 2v2. We are going to that ace match. Wow, that is the most dominant team. Brad, they're ready with the bands Miner and the Expo. Jin TV in blue at the bottom, throws out that Goblin Barrel. And Rad answers with a Goblin Gang and an Elixir Collector. Instant fireball material, that. Princess one lovely with the, with the long range. Gotcha. Hitting the Ice Golem, not to the Elixir Collector. 
has already taken hit by the fireball, so kind of having an even trade between the both players. Yeah. This princess, if you've got a little bit more of a... If the Ice Golem was a little bit closer to the Elixir Collector, it might not have got that second uh, Elixir, and that would have put him a little bit ahead, actually. You see the Dark Prince here coming out from Rad. And the Dark Prince coming out from Jin as well. So what are we going to see as the big heavy collector? There we go. Three, uh, three Musketeers all being drawn into that lane. Didn't want them to be split. Princess comes in. Or is not landing. Ice Golem in buying some time. And that will be the end of story for those three, mus three Musketeers. Very well handled there by Jin TV, I have to say. I think Jin TV's got this collected for himself. Fireball, of course, used for used to kind of counter the collector. But in the same scenario, you can you can actually use it right after the right after the three Musketeers spawn. You can actually take that as well very easily. Goblin's getting some damage there, down to 1,784 on that top right hand tower, and there's the goblins. Oh, unfortunate there. That was perfectly countered by Rad. Princesses will finish that up. And Rad is pushing very heavily here. Dark Prince is going to be able to connect to the tower after this. Two times Elixir is in the way of his health bar. No, not quite. Princess actually does a lot of damage. She's very weak. Against, well, gets basically defeated by every spell except for the Zap. There's the battering ramp. Doesn't even get past the bridge. But if you notice, Brad actually moved his Elixir Collector to the opposite side, knowing that Jin TV has an advantage on that right-hand side. Uh-huh. Because the Fireball will be connecting to the tower at the same time. But actually, the Goblins connected a good amount of damage. About two, three hundred there. And another barrel locked in. You see the tornado not really getting that Musketeer oh. to the left side. If he'd have got that Musketeer there, it would have been lights out for that tower. But it is anyway. Top right-hand tower goes down. Jin TV has there's a fireball. the advantage. To take out all the musketeers, Dark Prince is getting delayed, but Ice Golem will just drag him to the other side. And I think Rad has lost this game number one. Only two seconds left on the clock. That is going to be game. Going to Jin TV first game. Wow. Very, very well played there by Jin. Perfect. This is number two. This is game number two. We reset everything. Jin TV is in blue for OPGG Skeleton. Won that last game. But Fav. With Rad game with Rad is not one to uh, lose a 1v1 and I think we're gonna see something different. There's a goblin barrel for Rad. Tried to tornado Jin TV there, but missed. Missed the tornado completely. Not even close. That's it's possible to actually activate the king if you have that perfect perfectly placed, but Rad was on top. He was expecting a tornado. There, just running through. It's going to charge onto this tower. Jin TV counters with the Ice Wizard and the guards. Good, good answer to the uh, Prince's question there. He has taken some damage onto that tower. Is that going to be a problem going forward? I don't think it's not too much. Even with that tornado, Jin TV is feeling rushed. He has been making not the perfect placement of the tornado twice in a row. I was gonna say what that tornado just didn't seem particularly useful there for Jin TV. Yeah, even the Sekoro Dragon will not be too effective in any way. I think his starting hand was really lost in control. And just look at all the cards at the bottom of the screen. You can't, it's really hard to land all that. Of course, without the final card. Perfect. Elites, perfect guard placement there actually. I'm saying elites, the perfect guard placement there just to make sure that barrel didn't do any damage to the tower whatsoever. High Spirit jumps into the tower, gives it a nice big frosty hug. But I think they're just gonna wait, build up their elixir now, and start the next set of pushes. Real problem will come in with the cut. This time, uh, we'll actually activate, activate the King Tower. Better use of the Tornado. It's not actually too late. Still has a decent amount of HP. Yep. And nothing Rad has could really take it down from this point. But there's a graveyard. Is there an answer? Goblin Gang does come out. Poison for Jin TV. 
Guards coming down to the answer for the Skeleton Baron, but still taking quite a lot of damage onto that bottom left-hand tower. It was a little bit more compared to that graveyard. Also missed the poison. To actually grab onto the or pins it instead of all the goblin gang on the left side. You see the tornado again there. Was it necessary? Well, he doesn't really have the tornado to be used onto anything else. Only the goblin gang can be kind of counter with the tornado, but better as well as use it against the barrel. I think it's not a bad choice, but as long as he has the perfect placement for it. Taking a little bit more damage there, but there is the Ice Golem in front this time to tank a lot of damage. Down goes all the Goblins behind the Ice Golem though, that's going to be an issue. There's the Goblin Gang. Oh, this is getting a bit, bit heavy here, a bit rough for Jin TV. The real issue for Jin TV is that Princess. That's why he's actually using the poison all the way to the far. Not really damaging the left side. Princess, the range is way too big, taking out all the goblins, spear, spear goblins, as well as the air units at the same time. Red does have enough here to break through. He is going to take that tower. 927 left. All it'll take is a charge or two, a couple of hits from a barrel. He has a lot of answers to deal with that 927 HP tower. Not leaving too much, especially with that king tower activated from Jim TV. Could have landed a few more hits, I believe, but it's a lot more of a defensive tool himself actually using that tornado to drag that Colonel Dragon so saves the princess. Save the princess, save the world here. Another couple of hits from that goblin barrel down to 729. Rat is in control here. I don't think Jin TV has actually pushed across the bridge in a long time. He can't. He can't really cross the bridge. But once he does, it will be the time for the graveyard he comes to Jin TV with that tornado button. Poison right on top of the TV. Graveyard somewhat connecting directly to the tower. Good use of the tornado that time, pulling it out so the Spirit Goblins can finish it up. And he's slowly clawing that tower down, but I don't know if he's going to be able to do it in enough time. There's only 1 minute 10 seconds left of this game. Is he going to be able to do 1,300? Since it still damage? connects to all the one on the left side, Barrel will be available just now. And from with the log, they do have lots of spells doing some damage. Only chipping down about 100 at a time. Area effect there from that ice which did connect onto the tower. 492 on Jin TV's tower. Rad has 1,364 poison. Graveyard combo again. And there's a lot of connections here. They're dropping down the prison. The prince to actually defend here. Just enough, but you kind of wasted your defense to defend against the skeletons, which is basically a waste. It is it a waste? Because if he didn't defend there, he would have actually lost this game. 408 HP on the tower for Jin TV. 914 for Red. There's 25 seconds left. Whatever player gets a big push next wins. Okay, Princess does lock into the right side. Will be controlled by the guard. Single mistake from Jin TV will be game over. Two oh, ten with the long down two. And the Ice Golem did not really stop all the goblins. He did not have the tornado available for himself as well. Maybe the stalled Ice Golem was enough. A single to the winner will bring the team victory. Tiro PGG Skeleton and Bab Gaming. Can Japan continue their streak? Six match streak over two days. Or is it going to be the end? Where we have finally strikes back up. Execution in here for Jin TV. This means it's going to be a deck we haven't seen yet today. Of course, Executioner is a great card. It has a good body behind it and very good damage. Another, another expert with the poison will be going down. Actually, throws in. I thought it was going to connect to the tower, but not just in time. Fortunately, through it, an empty space, meaning there was nothing for it to connect to. Dark Prince here is going to slowly take out those skeletons. Horde. Mega Minion will kill two or three. Didn't get that many minions out the way, and they do connect onto the tower. So it does tons of damage. Even if you have one single minion land on good hit, and with the full HP, you will actually do tons of damage directly to the tower. Three of them. Maybe Jin TV just thought that Kushina is just enough. And I do have the poison to kind of counter the HUD all the time. It does make sure none of the Spear Goblins will get through for the duration. About 8 seconds, 2 spawns, I think. 
Uh, three Musketeers summoned at the back there. Split 2-1. How is Jing going to answer this with the cards he's shown so far? I don't think he's going to be able to. Slug, Executioner should do a good job. There we go. Executioner will do the job. Great angle, the placement of Executioner to do all the damage to all three units back there. Take some practice. Of course, I can't do this. <laughs> My Executioner play is uh, particularly weak. I don't use him that much. You see a lot of pros use him. And even they sometimes get the angle slightly wrong on the execution. So. That's why you bring the tornado in as well. And it is available. But with poison and the log, maybe not having three spells a little too much. But there is a tornado finally. Timing it perfectly to bring all of them together to pair up with the log damage. It's not connect to the third musketeer though. Otherwise, it would have been enough to pop them right there. All of them would have just died there if that log did hit that last one. The last spell used already from ETV and another tornado. A few minion hit is going to land on directly to the tower. Ooh, a much better of a trade from Rat to actually defend all that one. Yeah, it's hard to say who's going to push, who's going to break this uh, deadlock first. Dropping the most Musketeers right next to the bridge. Poison and Tornado, oh, poison. so effective against that 9 mana, 9 elixir cost right there. Summon the Frost got the Ice Golem there just to keep them in the poison to finish them off, and that's given him pretty big advantage, I feel, at this point in the game. 8 elixir, Tornado, uh, 7 elixir, 8 uh, Tornado plus the poison against 3 Musketeer. I was, I'll take it any day. 2 elixir is nothing to laugh at, but he was already elixir behind. So it does kind of bring him even, but he does have a little bit of an advantage here pushing forward. Tornado tried to pull the little three late this time. together. It's super hard to bring that all together now with the nerf to the time of the tornado now. Damage is the same, but only a few seconds to work on that. So which one can you defend? Do you defend the right side or the minion horde from the left? I, I would defend, yeah. Minion horde would have been the better one there. You do have the ice column. Stop that mega minion. Uh, stop that dark prince from running forwards. And a lock there, she can go down instantly here to a tower hit. Also here so low, but it's continuing to finally go down. Do you think she got her value from that three musketeers there? Nine mana for... Yeah, you are lots of spells and survived for a long enough time, I think. The great push, here's the big push once again, log poison to deal against it. But healing! Healing spell, something for Rat going all the way in with the Dark Prince. All three of them will be alive even after the poison. Mega Minion dropping down would get good damage onto the tower one, twice. I can't believe it. How many games have we casted there? We've seen heal potion. It's got to be, I can count on one hand. And we see two today. Three, including last year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and there was an event match too. So, coming in. Now, JTV knows that the healing is available. Poison has to be dealt a lot better of the timing. Oh, that tower took a lot of damage there. JTV's bottom left hand tower is at 500 HP. And he can't even use the tornado to bring all them together because it will actually amplify the, the healing effect to all three of them together. He does use it there. Oh, unfortunately, the ice golem kept everything there inside that healing potion. Will there be enough here to defend just about? But he doesn't have anything to attack with. 40 seconds. And Goblin Hunt chipping down a little bit. 35 seconds still left. Still very possible. One single mistake. And more likely onto the left lane of Jin TV. Very low, 443. And Rad shooting the opposite lane, going to the right side. Using all the spells and drag away from the tower. Oh, Let's charge in! Oh no! It got that connection. Now both towers are in very dangerous territory. He only has the last 10 seconds though. The healing comes in. The minion doing tons of damage to the executioner. Will actually connect the dots. Three oh! seconds and that will be the game. Going to Rat and Fab Gaming will take the win. Match number six over the weekends. Japan continues their streak over the Korean team.